Hello, I'm Sam from Jessup Says. The focus of my channel is to share and educate on how to buy less, buy better. It's not necessarily about buying less things, it's about buying something that fits its purpose perfectly and serves you for as long as possible. Now, if you're into menswear, it's pretty hard to avoid the fact that Pete Uomo recently happened. It's the pinnacle event for any modern hashtag menswear enthusiast, where people go and put together their best of the best fits and strut around like the proverbial peacock. It looks like fun, honestly, and I hope that Sunday I will be there too to strut around like a small peacock, probably a vested peacock, but until then, one thing I enjoy looking at is the photos that people post and what people are wearing, what trends are coming through, and what things I can look forward to seeing worn by us normies in the next three to five years or so. I was looking through those images that I started to notice that there was something that I hadn't noticed since the original hashtag menswear days around 2017-2018, and that is the subtle resurgence of the double monk shoe. And for such an occasion, I thought it was about time that I got out my pair and thought about how I could use them more in my day-to-day -day life. So the pair I have are the following. They are from Crockett and Jones. They are the Lowndes in dark brown burnished calf and they are made in the UK Northampton. The leather is burnished calf. It is European calf and it has been treated with aniline dyes. The other material is a leather sole, which is just a single leather sole. The construction is Goodyear welted. As for the fit, well, I ordered a 6.5 UK, which is the same size that I order everything in at Crockett and Jones. The width is the standard E width last, and the last is the 348 last. The cost of these was 550 Great British Pounds, which is around about 1,050 Australian dollars if you're buying them direct. But you can find them locally in Australia from Double Monk for 8.95, which is a pretty good deal. Now the history of Double Monk style is quite interesting, but I've covered that before and it's been covered many other times. So if you're curious about that, it's worth a look. As for my pair, well, I acquired them in late 2019 in preparation for my wedding in early 2020. I decided that as a person who is interested in menswear, though not the level that I am today, that I wanted a pair of Double Monks that sort of best expressed the sort of non-conformity that I felt in regards to what I wanted to wear on my wedding day. I really didn't want to be in a derby, I really don't like them, generally speaking. And the really, really sleek modern Oxford wasn't really the style of our wedding. And I did think of a loafer, but a loafer wasn't as much in my life as it is today, so I went a double monk. And these are a very, very pretty shoe. They're sleek and proportionate. The straps aren't too long or ostentatious. The deep brown color and the patina that's already developed, they really are a good looking shoe. And I'm really happy with how they look aesthetically. And it's not really what you traditionally see from a brand like Crockett and Jones, from an English brand. It's more Italian looking in terms of the sleek and long elongated toe that it has, as well as the squared off toe that it features. Now, at the time that I purchased these, I was working a relatively corporate job and wearing double monks to the office was very acceptable but I resigned that role shortly thereafter and haven't really had a need or an excuse to wear these regularly so they fell out of favor replaced by things like white sneakers and of course more recently loafers I found myself at a bit of a loss at what to combine them with and I think in part because of how uncommon they are here in the Australian market but also in part because of that squared off toe meaning that it feels more formal than my typical loafer style does but I kind of I want to change that. I want to put some fits together, inspired by PT, hopefully, and change that to get back to wearing my double one. But before that, let's talk about how they fit. The shoe is produced on the 348 last, which as far as lasts go is pretty modern, being produced originally in 2004. The most obvious design choice is its squared off toe, and its styling and fitting qualities has meant that it has been the last of choice for various shoes worn by James Bond in movies Skyfall, Spectre, and No Time to Die, making the last absolutely iconic. The original design was based on the 337, which Crock and Jones considered at the time to be their most exaggerated last and they went ahead and made it more bold sharper and longer with the 348 and that's what they've created they've created a quite a beautiful looking last to be honest it's designed to fit quite narrowly in the heel for a snug fit and there has been a lot of attention paid to the fit of the shoe overall as it is a very modern last there are two areas that I do find myself feeling a little bit when it's on the foot so let me just quickly discuss that firstly it's the arch which is really really nicely and closely supported I 
quite like the feeling of it being very close along my art. Sometimes it does feel like it's pulling a little bit, but if you don't like the feeling of really snug fit along the back of your foot, then this might not be the last for you. You might want to try a, an earlier Crockett and Jones last. They tend to fit a bit more roomy. The front of the shoe is actually really nice and wide and it allows for a great fitting area in the front of the foot. There's tons of room even for a very wide forefront of the foot, which is what I have. And the second area that is a bit unusual is that extra length that they've designed to have it look more long and elegant. And it sort of means that this toe of the shoe feels like it's a bit sprung or rather that the toe of the shoe trends upwards, which sort of when you walk makes your big toe feel like it's being sort of pushed into the top of the shoe. It's not uncomfortable, but it is something that I notice when I'm walking around a lot. There's plenty of room for the toes. I can wiggle them all and there's nothing tight all there, but it is something the toe does feel slightly sprung. It's quite unusual. And I just put it down to the long pointy last. The fit overall is something that I'd say is actually very, very good. It's very comfortable. It's just the aesthetic design choices that they've made to make the shoe feel a bit longer, makes it feel a little less snug than something like a loafer, like a slipper, which is something that I'm wearing more often. But all in all, I'm very happy with how these fit and they fit true to size. So with all that discussed, let's go through some ways that I think I might wear these in my day-to-day -day life. It seems that pretty much everyone online has two ideas of how to wear these just double monks in general, and that is with jeans or with a suit. And that's not really what I wear every day. So let's try and mix that up a bit and make them a bit more casual and a bit more wearable. And importantly, things that I actually want to or actually do wear every day. Probably the most challenging part of these shoes is keeping them quite casual. So I'm going to do just three casual outfits. Starting off, I'm gonna take inspiration from just the general Google and go with a pair of jeans, but this time I'm going to go with a pale blue pair, the Bergenbergs that I have, and they have that sort of casual and slouchy vibe. Of course, add a white t-shirt for the base layer for the upper and for outerwear, I'm gonna go with the private white VC safari jacket because I just like how the browns of the shoe and the browns of the jacket match. This is basically an outfit that I do wear already regularly with other shoes, but substituting the double monks in for my typical loafers, for example, kind of looks quite good. Hopefully in a good way to get started wearing these a lot more. For the next fit, I was inspired by PT a bit more directly with a military style fit. I'd love to do that full military pant style with a nice denim jacket. I saw quite a few of those styles from the Japanese crowd, but sadly I don't have one of those jackets at the stage, so I'm going to have to start by pulling on my Nami Man military trousers, a white t-shirt again, to keep it simple, and in lieu of that denim jacket, I'm going to pull that private white VC back on as it fits perfectly with that sort of military-esque. Another outfit that I wear fairly regularly already, and I'm keen to see how it comes together with the double monks now attached. Finally, I wanted to try them with it my pair of chinos from Informale, which are undoubtedly one of my most worn pair of trousers. One thing that I love about chinos is that they can be dressed up or dressed down really, really easily. So if I'm wearing a pair of chinos and the t-shirt and the private YVC jacket aren't really the vibe of the day, I could quite easily change into an OCBD and a suit jacket for a more dressed up vibe. And again, the double monks being a little bit like loafers are actually very suitable in both. I personally think that the squared off toe looks most comfortable with the suit jacket, but that's my bias and I'm obviously working to try and change that. All three outfits should be really useful and wearable, but I will revert at some point and hopefully report back on how I've worn them and hopefully I've worn them a lot more. So there we have it, three ways I can start incorporating my double monks back into my wardrobe rotation on a much more regular basis. I am really keen to put these outfits together and see how the shoes work in practice other than just the theory. I think they'll pair nicely and bring a slightly different vibe to the ensembles that I already feel comfortable wearing. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, links are in the description as always, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.